Alrighty, hello everyone, and we are live! Welcome back to another episode of Gaming with Gyoza Planet, uh, with your host, Gyoza Planet. And yeah, we're back with more Tab G, because it's a very fun game, and frankly, I need the break. So, uh, well, I don't have many plans for today. Uh, heads up, it's probably going to be a short episode, because I have... I have stuff to do. Also, uh, another heads up. Uh, I don't know if I can make, I'll be able to fully upload this week. I have basically back to back to back to back to back exams. Well, I have exams and then I have finals the week after. And then I have more exams and then I'm gone. So, yeah. I'll try to make a video every day this week. I, uh, no promises. Um, it is quite possible that I, uh, there are shorter videos, so I only do one game, or two really fast games if we get like ambush off spawn and then just keep dying over and over. But yeah, a lot shorter. Like, sorry, but uh, I, just, I literally don't have the time. I'd love to play more. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, another news: Sunday, which is nice because yay, it's almost Monday again. Ball soup, ooh, because you have to go because uh, obligations exist. Uh, yeah, uh, so that kind of sucks. I, uh, yeah, I've got a lot of stuff, which I'm not really looking forward to, if I'm be honest. But um, yeah, I suppose I'll survive. Um, what else? Uh, I don't know. Uh, food. Ooh, right. So. Uh, I had a really good meal today, so, if, i uh, there's this dish called paella, so P-A-E-L-L-A, -L -L -A. it's basically, a it's a Spanish rice dish, and it's basically a giant pan of rice, uh, with, like, a ton of, with a ton of spices mixed in, uh, with, like, a lot of varied meats, some of them are veggie, some of them are, like, uh, chorizo, which is sausage, and then sausage, which is, Chorizo is, act is specifically it's kind of spicy sausage, and then you get get like pork and chicken and stuff in there, and then the most popular one, however, is seafood. So you get like oysters, clams, uh, shrimp, really good with shrimp. Um, yeah, uh, fish, uh, like grilled calamari and stuff like that, and it's just it's really good. It's Honestly, it's one of the best things. Uh, so, yeah, it's one of the best things about southern Spain, where, um, yeah, it's one of the best things about southern Spain. Which I wish we could get the real thing where I am right now, but sadly, yeah. I mean, it's still the place I where we got it is still run by a Spanish family, but it's not the same. Trust me, I've had both and. Like, if you're like, 
So basically, like, they just get a giant ladle and they scoop it out and they serve it to you. And if you get really lucky, you can get some of the grilled part. So, like, the edges of the pan and... Oh, it's scrumptious. They're just... It's so good. It's super well done. And it's frankly a, a, one of my absolute favorite meals. And I don't like... Like, for reference, I am not a huge fan of uh, seafood. Oh, that was close. Uh, okay, grab loot and blood. Shotguns in this game are really finicky. I have to, I do have to mention. Well, they're finicky in multiple, for multiple cases. Number one, um, most of the, unlike most of the guns in this game, shotguns have uh, absolutely zero limb multipliers. So, for example, if you have something like this, the MAC-10, if you would shoot somebody in the legs, it would do, like, 15 damage. If you shoot, shoot somebody in the body, it does, like, 20. And if you do it in the head, it does, like, 30 or some other amount. It does more if you land the headshot. However, for shotguns, that's not true. It just deals a flat. It would deal, like, one pellet would deal, like, 20 damage across every limb. Oh. Oh, that's good to know. So, this is the uh, s snail aura, and basically what it does is that when I uh, go prone, it summons a giant healing bubble around me, which, despite the fact that it heals a lot, and especially if you have buddies or something, it's incredibly visible, so it's really gonna get you away, which is not fun. Bandages. Hold on. It's fine, you'll still do a good chunk of damage, but it's this fog, um, not fog. Uh, uh, so, fun fact, Curse of Fog is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you can't see past, what is that, 30 meters, which is not good. <laughs> really. Somebody's here. Oh, no. Uh, That was a shotgun. That is not a shotgun. That is absolutely... That's a Winchester rifle. Oh, no. Okay. No, I do not want to beat this game. I'm trying to run away. No wonder I wasn't hitting anything. I was like... Pretty bad shotgun. So, uh, big tip. Read what your weapon does. Uh, it helps. Wait, here, can we do something really funny? Yes, yes we can. There he is. Alright. We have eyes on the other dude. Oh. Well. Alright. No, no, I'm trying to hit the beat. Does it see us? No. Good. And we 
missed. Oh boy. Oh no, he's up top. Ow. He has really good aim. Oh, there's somebody over there. Well, that's not good. Ah. Oh, he snuck up on me. Oh, that sucks. <sighs> well, uh, hold on. What time is it? Yeah, I've got time for game two. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. The other kind of, I suppose, quote-unquote, issue with shotgun... Oh, whoa. Yeah, the quote-unquote issue with shotgun is that, uh... You don't really have a crosshair in this game. As you can tell, I kind of just... You guess to make where somebody is, which... Well, it's kind of a problem, because with a shotgun... Uh, you kind of need to know where you're aiming. Admittedly, there is stuff like the laser sight attachment, which I've picked up a couple of times. But, uh... But, uh... Yeah, hold on, I'm I gotta quit that, because I, I think I accidentally loaded into the <laughs> shooting range. Whoops. Uh... Anyways. Yeah. So, it's not great, because, uh... It's, they're really hard to aim, especially... It doesn't help that most of the shotguns uh, flail around wildly when you run around, because your arms flail with you. So, yeah, it's not great. So, that was unfortunate, but uh, I'm sure we'll do better this game. <sighs> Anyways, yeah. so, uh, what are the news? What are the things I want to talk about? Uh, have any other food news, uh, besides the fact that soup is good, soup is great, uh, uh more people should have soup, but, <laughs> uh, that, that's a meme, but, uh, I don't really know, um, I did actually watch this cool video earlier today, about, uh, I don't, okay, I don't know how to pronounce his name, um, it's K-E-I-I-C-H-I, -I -I -C -H -I, uh, and then something, he was, uh, he was a Japanese, uh, racer, um, like, person who races cars, uh, known as the Drift King, and he was, like, the person who was single hand, well, more or less single-handedly responsible for the introduction of, like, drifting as a thing to the United States and, well, past Japan, and it's, honestly, it's a really, really cool story. Uh, hold on, I can actually probably pull up a video here. Uh, yeah, the video is called How a Criminal Became the Drift, Drift King by uh, the channel called The Squid with two D's at the end. Uh, and yeah, it's a really, really cool video. And honestly, I really like the channel. Uh, the dude has a talent for making even like things that would normally be like either a really boring essay or like something you just read on the wikipedia page when you're bored and then forget about into like a super thrilling story and like his music like or there i don't know if it's male female uh robot i don't know yeah their music choice is excellent their editing is superb and even even better they're a very good uh video maker and uh, they always cite their sources. You can even see, like, at the top left in the middle of their videos, you can see, like, who it's from. Which is really nice, because sometimes when they bring up, like, a documentary or something that appears in the middle of the video, you can just go and look it up, and yeah, it's really cool. Uh, but yeah. And it's really funny, though, because it's like, you never, you just think about it, and it's like, if you think about it for a minute, you just sit down and you're like, wait a minute, it makes sense. Drifting is like, eh, sorry, drifting as like, kind of like an art style. Well, I say art style, it's not really an art style, is it? It's more so just a, I don't know. It's kind of just like a hobby, 
Well, it's not a hobby, it's more so a... I suppose, yeah, it is an art style. It's an it's a art style via with cars racing. Yeah, but it's so interesting that... What I find interesting is that, like, it came... It be So, first off, one, it more or less was an absolute accident that it exists. It just kind of came around through another dude that's mentioned in the video, whose name I'm not even going to try and pronounce. Basically, he was a, a motorcycle racer who stopped motorcycle racing because motorcycle racing is incredibly dangerous, and he almost crashed. Well, fatally crashed. He did crash, which he stopped. And then, since he had experience on motorcycles, and so once he, once he became a race car uh, driver, yeah, let's go to containers. Once he became a race car driver, he was like, basically what people did back then. So imagine, it's 1950s, you got a racetrack, and everybody's just kind of like, when you have people on turns, they just kind of like go around the turn. They, they slow down to enter the turn, and then they speed back up to exit it. But like, it wasn't even like fast speed, it was just they kind of like stopped moving for a bit and then moved a bit faster. And it's like, it's honestly kind of, it was kind of lame. Well, not lame, but it's the only thing that they knew back then. But like, it's not at all time efficient and also not all speed efficient because you have to slow down, which cop, which takes time and also, uh, well, it takes time, it slows your speed, and you have to accelerate again, which, well, A, takes fuel, and B, also puts more wear and tear on the car. But, um, yeah, and also it's, like, yeah, it's really, really inefficient. And then this dude, what he was like, what he did is that he didn't really care, he just went full speed. And what he would do is he would go, in full, he would go full speed sideways, and then he would wait for the traction of the wheels, um, to kick in so that they would correct us, of course correct him, and then so he could take the turns properly, which is honestly awesome. And then thing is, that's it was basically the precursor to drifting, and I mean if you think about it, it's really really effective. Because basically, instead of having to slow down, take the turn, and then speed up again. What he could do is he could just take the turn at full speed and then come out accelerating even faster than before. So if he kept all of his speed, he could take the turns tighter, which means he could do better racing lines. For reference, racing lines is basically like the path you take throughout a race. Basically imagine like kind of like a... Uh, it's basically like, you know how your GPS tells you the fastest way to get to a destination in theory? It's basically that. It's what's the fastest way to get around the turn or through a course and so like if you have a lot of zigzag turns it would be that would be for example like hugging the insides of each turn so you can just transfer from from one turn to the next if you have like a lot of u-turns it would be like going on the outside so you can uh accelerate all the uh, street sections between the uh what's it called between the u-turns or i suppose uh I think I saw something. Um, also, I'm just gonna drop that and we'll go max. Anyways, yeah. And, so, it was really, really effective, because not only do you get better racing lines, which means, basically, you take the turn... Do I? I have history with this thing. Back in episode 3, this little thingy ruins my day by blowing me up very unceremoniously but uh yeah i suppose we'll give it a second chance anyways where was i right drifting and it was really effective because you could just kind of be like already by and oh wait Oops. and it was really effective like to the point where the dude would like drift around corners and like he would just overtake opponents in the turn like no issue no problem and like it wasn't even difficult he just it was really easy for him and it was absolutely hilarious like and so this so that's like the old dude the one who started in the 1950s and then in the 1980s more or less the the dude 
the main dude, the one the video's about, um, was watching that and he was absolutely fascinated by it, by it. so he eventually, uh, got into, uh, racing, he managed to get himself a car and started racing, and, hold on, alrighty, we're gonna pick this up, and then we're gonna swap, yeah, we'll do that. Anyways, uh, where was I? Oh, right, racing. I... Why can't you put a red dot on an axe? That's, that's a very good question. There's one I do not know the answer to. Aha, there you are. Very fast, oh jeez. I'm gonna have to put the drifting monologue on pause for a moment. I really need to not be here. So. Did these arrows ever go? Yeah. Where's the dude? Oh, he just kind of left. Oh, yeah, fun fact uh, there's a special ability with the axe that it throws down a giant ice wall. It's really effective. There you are. Oh, 
sucks that was fun though uh i think i'm gonna have to call it there though sorry but uh yeah actually hold on uh i suppose i can i don't know actually if the promise does it appear in the thing the crossbow interesting it doesn't appear in the firing range or if it does it's in the super secrets weapon section that i do not know where that is um now that's a shame. The developers definitely should that add, should add that. Anyways, yeah. So as you saw, you kind of stick somebody and then it goes boom. Yeah, it, it, it's finicky. It's a crossbow, but it's not great. But I don't know. I suppose. Oh, here. This is the gospel. I mean, you kind of show off what it does. You stick somebody. And then it, yeah, a couple seconds later they go boom. Okay, so it's basically just oh. Much more dramatic version of the gospel. I think it might also just be a purely key weapon. Ow! Oh jeez. Oh right, fun fact, if you come in the firing range, there's uh well everything, which includes all the perks. Which I am definitely gonna have to do showcase with some of these because, for example, lit beats. Uh, that's jump. So basically, what the lit beats does is that physically you have a little beat. You have a beat, as you can see. And you aim down sights. If you shoot when your thing is on the beat, uh, your bullets now deal fire damage, which is awesome. If you don't shoot when they're on the beat, though, they kind of just flop to the ground. <laughs> yeah. However... <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. However, I think... I think if you shoot it when, uh, yeah, if you shoot it when the beat is going, the 
like your projectile also gets like a ton of of speed. Yeah, like yeah, it's going like four times as fast. I suppose like this is the normal that is normal crossbow it kind of maxes out like that's what 100 meters oh i never reloaded Oops. yeah and then that is the uh lift beats crossbow which is like 200 yeah that's like 300 meters i think the error i think whatever you're shooting goes about three times faster <laughs> if you're uh if you get it yeah, it's absolutely insane. It, it's even better if you get like a sniper rifle or something, because uh, it basically becomes hit scan, which, which means uh. Oh, this is Dash, aka Speedy Car. Yeah, if only you could stack them. Wait, hold on. your bloodlust and then not a cry yeah yeah there's a ton of really fun stuff uh, some of it is honestly really rare to get but uh yeah it's all great uh well thanks for watching and for sticking around for a little bonus section but uh yeah i don't know so as i said i'm very very swamped this week i'll try and make a video every day uh if I can, they're most likely going to be one game maximum. If I can't, uh, then, yeah, sorry. Um, but, um, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you all next time with more Tab G. I'll stick with this for a while. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, see you all, and ciao.